Dave, hey, welcome back. Thank you. In our conversations over the last few months, uh, as I mentioned to you, I've learned a lot. Uh, you and I talked about visiting sawmills and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I've gone here and there over the years. You've done some of that too, but uh, I thought it'd be great today if you could talk a little bit about the process of sawing lumber. We have a little model here, but I think that the big thing is, um, you know, math is still a four letter word for most of my students and that's okay, but there are times where it really helps. And, and in this particular case, we see the end of a tree. This is just a representation, but they're a representation of the annual growth rings, okay? okay? And what happens is if I were to take a line at any point I went through, I would be tangent to a circle. So people hear tangential cutting and they're like, mm. well, it's most of the way we cut, especially softwood lumber. We just cut straight through, okay? And we call it through and through a plain sawing. Plain sawing. Now okay. that's this board right here that's been taken out of here. And you can see the growth rings are pretty wide going across. It gives the log the highest yield, all right? But it is not the most stable wood, okay? Because we know that it's going to cup. And most cost effective for the end consumer, I assume. Yep. Least expensive. It's an easy yield. process. Okay. And it, and again, giving the most yield out of a log, which, you know, we're looking for these days as well. Okay. So most of our softwood dimensional lumber, okay, is plain sawn. Yeah. And you'll just see these lines going through. And what we call that is tangential sawing. Now, if you wanted a more stable product and maybe a product with different figure, in other words, how it looks, okay. you could then cut in a radial fashion and we call that, and this is the confusing part, we actually call that riff sawing, but it produces quarter sawn grain. And this is the issue. So in a plain sawn um, wood, and normally of course this is optimized for whatever other products they wanna get out of here, if they wanna get four befores, if they wanna get timbers out of here, if it's a large enough tree. But if they're small trees, they're gonna get the standard two befores, two be sixes, and that sort of thing. So what will happen is sometimes they will take the log and they'll divide it into four parts called so, quarters. So the quarter, okay. And then they'll move the cant, that, that portion of the log up, and they will slice through and they'll be able to get some of this radial grain. And that would be something like this here. Now you'll notice it's not as wide as the plain sawn board here. The ray cells that go across like this are constraining it. It won't move as much as a plain sawn board and it rarely cups. The problem is, of course, you wound up with a lot of waste when you're cutting this. So this quarter sawing, we have a picture here. Looking at this log, you can see that you've got plain sawing here gotcha. and you can get quarter sawing here. Now the quarter sawing is almost 90 degrees. So if you look at the edge of a board, you see vertical grain, and that's what we call VG fur. So in my world at Dunn Lumber, that was always the really nice fur finished lumber, yeah. CVG, okay. And they weren't very wide boards uh, <sighs> yeah. because of the process of getting yeah. it out. Because there and would have to be a huge log to get a one by 12 CVG. Very huge, which is why we do a lot okay. of laminating All techniques right. now. Okay. <laughs> um, so with something like this, now you've got the almost vertical, okay, so just about 90 degrees, but at a place where you start to get something between 30 and 60 degrees, okay. then all of a sudden you have rift. And then anything beyond that would be your plain sawn. And this is subject to a lot more movement because the movement on a piece of wood is across these annular rings. And these annular rings are longer there. Wow. Now you can get a mixed grain piece where you've got some here where it's quarter sawn and then it starts to get more uh, plain sawn and then back to quarter sawn again. It depends on how they do it. Wow. But these are the prized pieces at the lowest yield. So quarter sawn, most stable, fine grain, more expensive, less yield, and, and rift falls somewhere in between that and plain named, sawn. Yes, so the way, the way it works is a sawyer looks at the log and says certain things. I'm a buyer, I look at the, the product right. and I look at it and say, wait a minute, that's not this. Yeah. So what will happen a lot of times, and we don't have it here, but a lot of times they'll actually do radial cuts out of this. There's a lot of waste in the log, but it gives you all quarter sawn. And are you ready? They call it rift sawn. Okay? So when someone says, hey, I've got some rift white oak, oh, you know. And what I tell the students is actually look at the end of the board. And if you see the grain lines almost vertical, that's quarter sawn, even though 
the industry calls it rifts on. And this is one of the things that's so frustrating. Oh, I've mm-hmm. been trying to study up for our series here the last few weeks, and it took me a while because you're right. You, you think about cutting methods. I was thinking, okay, you plain saw it, you quarter saw it, you rift saw it, which I guess technically there is, you could really rift saw. That could be yep. a cutting process. But that great video you sent me, uh, I looked at. Yeah. Basically, they would either plain saw or they quarter saw. And then when they talked about this, all right, quarter saw and then rift material. So to me, it kind of came around to ultimately an evaluation a naming architecture for the grain that you yeah. end up with in your hand as a builder like yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it was very interesting. And the problem is for new builders, they're coming into all of our terminology, yeah. you know? So yeah, it's rift cut. Okay, but but it doesn't, it's not rift. Yeah, I got that. Okay, but you're going to have to learn those terminologies. Okay. And my easy way again is just simply say, look at the end of the board and you'll be able to tell from there. I've grown up in in the dimensional lumber world at Dunn Lumber, you know, finished products. We didn't sell a lot of hardwoods. We sold some S2S and, you know, walnuts and oaks and alders and things like that. But as far as a finished S4S, walk out, build something for, you yeah. know, a heavy DIYer, a lot of times it was oak. And I think I mentioned yeah. you stocking the oak. I was so used to looking at our CVG fur thinking, you know, just that buttery, straight grain, perfect pieces. And then so I'm stocking the oak and all of a sudden I'd see it had a little bit different grain, but it also had uh, almost like a blotchy look on some pieces. Yep. And I thought, oh, wow, that's kind of not how we're going to sell that. Nobody's going to want that. It doesn't match the rest. But you shared that maybe that's sometimes really valuable and sought after. Can you talk about how that comes about in a board? Especially in the oaks, but there are certain species that show the medullary rays. Medullary okay? rays. And the rays are going this way across right. the tree. Okay. And the oaks show these rays if you cut it a certain way. And this is what drives people nuts. Okay. I have a sample to show of plain sawn, quarter sawn, and rift sawn. And more importantly, while we're looking at the end of the board and we talk about stability and everything else, it's the face. It's in other words, for appearance. So if you're a cabinet maker, furniture maker, these things are really important. An example would be for a quarter sawn, when you look at the grain on a piece of oak, something like white oak, stickly, green and green from the arts and crafts movement. We used a lot of white oak then. And what the architects specced out was they wanted these big ray flex coming across. And I'll show you the picture. So, If you have plain sawn, you can see those great cathedrals and those, uh, if you will, big V pattern in the wood. Flame patterns, somebody referred to them as maybe, right? Especially for the softwoods, yes, exactly. And then for rift sawn, you can see here that those grain lines, where they're going is that 30 to 60 degree. Correct. And then VG, vertical grain or quarter sawn, you can see basically is just going straight up and down. Now where that plays in is when you start to take a look at what the figure is in certain woods. So as I said, for the different woods, this figure will come out. It wouldn't come out for maple. It was not gonna come out for pine. But for something like white oak, it's really very pronounced. And this piece here shows the ray flex coming all the way across the board. Sure and this was prized, very prized by people in the uh, 20s and 30s and the whole arts and crafts movement. Uh, and we like these. Now it is a question of taste. Some people don't, yeah. uh, some people do. Generally, quarter sawn is pretty boring. It's just lines coming down, a piece of VG fur. Yeah, good... It's not very figured, um, but this is the figure that they were going after. Yeah. And on some species, um, some of the exotics, uh, this is a piece of Australian lace wood. And the only reason that that shows, the only reason is because of the way it's cut. So we're always as builders concerned about structure, all right? And also for cost. Yeah. So we're trying to build things you know, with, with parts of a tree. And it's really, we just wanna get the most yield out of it. And that's fine because it's all covered over. Yeah. But if you're building furnishings, then all of a sudden this figure is really important. Yeah. That's amazing, Dave. I, I can certainly, uh, I've grown to appreciate the beauty of some of this stuff and how it comes about and the knowledge and skills it takes to make some of this stuff. And it all starts with how it's sliced and diced. But trying to make sense of this, where all of a sudden you have quarter sawn, but when you quarter that log, 
you're not really going to wind up with much quarter saw. Right. But if right. you riff saw it by having it by simple radial cuts, yeah. then you wind up with all quarter saw. So the riff sawing method, I mean, just at first glance to me, it seems like that would need a, a high tech modern mill to do it. Or could you just do it with a band saw in a shop if you knew what you were doing and it's just how you cut the log? That's a good point. Normally in the shops, we don't cut logs. We're working from 12 or 16 quarter or something. And then, yes, you're right. We can remill that. Okay. okay. To show that ray flex. For okay. sure, um, but in the sawmills, no, they were very adept at cutting the, the board, uh, cutting the log in okay. a lot of different fashions. So they just make jigs to support it, however, yeah. however they need to do it. Okay. I kind of think of it as um, if you've got a long cylinder, they're rotating that cylinder, making a slice, rotating it again, okay. and getting that radial cut. Sure. And the, the funny thing is, they'll talk about tangential cuts because if you can imagine that line is a saw blade, you can see right here that it's touching that circle. So yeah. plain sawn is tangential cutting. But we don't talk about in the industry radial cutting, which would make a lot more sense for yeah. someone trying to understand this. <laughs> this is fascinating. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to our next episode. Thank you.